Mm -hmm. Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this beautiful Wednesday, December 4th, 2019, I believe. Uh, and my name is Sam Mitchell, and this is my little sidekick, Sancho Panza. <coughs> and we're here doing what we do every day at Collapse Chronicles. Welcome to the rabbit hole of Collapse Chronicles. Didn't your mother warn you about people like us? Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I have, I'm getting ready uh, for my interview with environmental historian and fire expert, Professor Stephen Pine. I'm really excited about this interview. We're going to talk about the pyrocene, the age of fire that uh, we are heading into here in the 21st century and I've got to get ready for that but before I do I I think I have time to bring you today's chronicle of the collapse but before I even do that I want to send out a big thank you to kind-hearted tribes member Richard Bowman uh, for <clears throat> his very kind PayPal donation here at collapsechronicles at gmail.com. Thank you, Brother Richard Bowman. We really appreciate your kindness and anybody who has ever found it in their hearts and wallets to support whatever it is that I do here on YouTube. Sancho and I really, really do support it, guys. All joking aside, and... Uh, you know, I was thinking about doing this uh, article on overpopulation that I'm glad to see. But we just covered that yesterday. <clears throat> if you missed the collapse yesterday, the chronicle yesterday, uh, talking about the single best, uh, the single best essay I have ever read about overpopulation by a fellow named Kevin Casey. Make sure you go hear that. I'm trying to get Kevin on the show. So I'm going, I'll probably come back to this new article on overpopulation, but we're going to today, uh, we're going to go over to this outfit that I'm spending more and more time on. Uh, called the Conversation Academic Rigor Journalistic Flair. This uh, with this article uh, by a fellow named Nick Longrich. He is a sen a senior lecturer in paleontology and evolutionary biology from the University of Bath. And uh, Nick is someone we should probably get on the show as well. And on the conversation, Nick is uh, looking into the question, were other humans the first victims of the sixth mass extinction? And I am going to put the link on here <clears throat> and invite you to read this instead of looking Instead of looking forward into the 21st century, we're going to take a step backwards and look at some of the things humans did to get us to the point we're at. Take it away, <clears throat> Nick. Nine human species walked the earth 300,000 years ago. Now there is just one. The Neanderthals were stocky hunters adapted to Europe's cold steppes. The related Denisovans inhabited Asia, while the more primitive Homo erectus lived in Indonesia and Homo rodentius in Central Africa. 
several short, small-brained species survived along them. Homo naledi in South Africa, Homo luzonensis in the Philippines, Homo floresensis, the hobbits in Indonesia, and of course the mysterious red deer cave people. The mysterious red deer cave people in China. Given how quickly we're still discovering new species, meaning new extinct species, <clears throat> more are likely waiting to be found. But by 10, that was 300,000 years ago, but by 10,000 years ago, they were all gone. Hmm, what could have happened? The disappearance of these other species of, hu of well, basically human, resembles a mass extinction, but there was no obvious environmental catastrophe. Volcanic eruptions, climate change, asteroid impact driving it. Instead, <clears throat> these extinctions timings suggest they were caused by the spread of one new species evolving 260,000 to 350,000 years ago in southern Africa. Take a wild guess, the name of that species, Homo sapiens, the wise one. Yes, the wise one. <clears throat> The spread of modern humans out of Africa has caused a sixth mass extinction, a greater than 40,000 year event extending from the disappearance of Ice Age mammals to the destruction of rainforest by civilization today. But were other humans the first casualties? We, meaning the wise ones, we are a uniquely dangerous species. We hunted woolly mammoths, ground sloths, and moas, that's kind of like an ostrich, to extinction. We destroyed plains and forests for farming, modifying over half our planet's land area. We altered the planet's climate. But we are most dangerous to other human populations because we compete for resources and land. History is full of examples of people warring, displacing, and wiping out other groups of people over territory, from Rome's destruction of Carthage to the American conquest of the West and the British colonization of Australia. There have also been recent genocides and ethnic cleansing in Bosnia, Rwanda, Iraq, Darfur, and Myanmar. Like language or tool use, a capacity for and tendency to engage in genocide is arguably an intrinsic, instinctive part of human nature. And he, in, in this article, he's, he links you over to all of these other articles and studies, uh, in, in, you know, backing up uh, what he is saying in this essay. <clears throat> There is little reason to think that early Homo sapiens were any less territorial, less violent, less intolerant, less human. Optimists have painted early hunter-gatherers as peaceful, noble savages and have argued that our culture, I'm sorry, that our culture, not our nature, creates violence. But field studies, 
historical accounts, and archaeology all show that war in primitive cultures was intense, pervasive, and lethal. Neolithic weapons such as clubs, spears, axes, and bows combined with guerrilla tactics like raids and ambushes were devastatingly effective. Violence was the leading cause of death among men in these societies, and wars saw higher casualty levels per person than in World Wars One and Two. Old bones and artifacts show this violence is ancient. The 9,000-year-old Kennewick man from North America has a spear point embedded in his pelvis. The 10,000-year-old Nataruk site in Kenya documents the brutal massacre of at least 27 men, women, and children. It is unlikely that the other human species were much more peaceful. The existence of cooperative violence in male chimpanzees suggests that war even predates the evolution of humans. Neanderthal skeletons show patterns of trauma consistent with warfare. But sophisticated weapons likely gave Homo sapiens, the wise one, a military advantage. The arsenal of early Homo sapiens probably included projectile weapons like javelins and spear throwers, throwing sticks, and clubs. Complex tools and culture would also have helped us efficiently harvest a wider range of animals and plants, feeding larger tribes and giving our species a strategic advantage in numbers. But cave paintings, carvings, and even musical instruments hit at something far more dangerous a sophisticated capacity for abstract thought and communication. The ability to cooperate, plan, strategize, manipulate, and deceive may have been our ultimate weapon. The incompleteness of the fossil record makes it hard to test these ideas, but in Europe, the only place with a relatively complete, and archeo complete archaeological record, fossils show that within a few thousand years of our, meaning the wise one's arrival, Neanderthals vanished. Traces of Neanderthal DNA in some Eurasian people prove we didn't just replace them after they went extinct. We met and we mated. And by mated, I, I'm going to take a wild guess what he means by mated. And if I get him on the show, I'm going to ask this. Is mating... Do you think it was male uh, Homo sapien conquerors raping the female uh, Neanderthals after killing the men? And my guess is the vast majority of, of the inter that, that any Neanderthal DNA remaining in our DNA is the product of rape. Uh, I'm just taking a wild guess. Uh, anyway, where were we? <clears throat> Elsewhere, DNA tells of other encounters with... Well, guys, I have to... Uh... I'm going to keep on with it. 
Ah, uh, oh boy, y you know, I've got too many people in my head. I think I have some Neanderthal DNA remaining in my brain that I just figured out, but I've got a lot on my plate today, and I am getting close to the end of this video, so uh, I, am, I am just, uh, to, through the delight of many of you, I am going to uh, I, I am going to slog ahead with the rest of this Chronicle of the Collapse because what the hell, who am I kidding anyway? Shit. <clears throat> anyway, where was I? <laughs> Elsewhere, DNA tells of other encounters with archaic humans. East Asian, Polynesian, and Australian groups have DNA from Denisovans, DNA from another species, possibly Homo erectus, occurs in many Asian people. African genomes show traces of DNA from yet another archaic species. The fact that we interbred, meaning the fact that we raped these other species, proves that they disappeared, you know, one way or the other, only after encountering us or being encountered by us. But why would our ancestors wipe out their own relatives, causing a mass extinction, or perhaps more accurately, a mass genocide? The answer lies in population growth. Humans reproduce exponentially, like all species, unchecked, we historically doubled our numbers every 25 years, and once humans became cooperative hunters, we had no predators. Without predation controlling our numbers and little family planning beyond delayed marriage and infanticide, Populations grew to exploit the available resources. Hmm. Further growth or food shortages caused by drought, harsh winters, or over-harvesting resources would inevitably lead tribes into conflict over food and foraging territory. Warfare became a check on our population growth, perhaps the most important one. Our elimination of other species of human probably was not a planned, coordinated effort of the sort practiced by civilizations, but a war of attrition. The end result, however, was just as final. Raid by raid, ambush by ambush, valley by valley, modern humans would have worn down their enemies and taken their land. Yet, the extinction of Neanderthals, at least, took a long time, thousands of years. This was partly because early Homo sapiens lacked the advantages of later conquering civilizations. Large numbers, supported by farming and epidemic diseases like smallpox, flu, and measles that devastated their opponents. But while Neanderthals lost the war, to hold on so long they must have fought and won many battles against us, suggesting a level of intelligence close to our own. 
Today, we look up at the stars and wonder if we are alone in the universe. In fantasy and science fiction, we wonder what it might be like to meet other intelligent species like us, but not us. It is profoundly sad to think that we once did, and now, because of it, they are gone. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you, Nick Longrich, for filling in some gaps of answering the question, were other humans the first victims of the sixth mass extinction? I would love to get Nick on the show and ask him, will the remaining humans be the next victim of the sixth mass extinction because of our big sapient brains. But anyway, I have got to wrap up this, uh, <clears throat> this, uh, uncomfortable, uh, video this chronicle of the collapse and get back to studying for my interview with Stephen Pine. And if you did enjoy uh, this video, would you please take a few seconds to thumb it up. If you did not enjoy this video, you can thumb it down. And I'm just going to say, please, guys, in your comments, don't uh, have some fun with me. Uh, I, I mean, really, uh, just just let the faux pas go, all right? Uh, if you could be so kind and uh, get out there and enjoy the building Age of Fire while you still can before the next resource war ramps up and... Come over here and subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you're at it. Bye, guys.